<laughs> we sure have some weather. I mean, we've got fronts swirling around us, storms coming in and out. I'm joining Keith Cavias, and we just got done fishing the NWT tournament in Escanaba. Keith won the event, a huge weight, and I was lucky enough to take second. We used a breakthrough technique, something that's not been seen before, and a breakthrough lure. So we wanted to come back at the scene of the crime and try to show you exactly how we caught these fish. We could have kept this a secret and fished tournaments with it for a couple years, but our whole careers, we've shared hot techniques and hot lures with you guys. We're gonna go out and make some walleye shiver, and hopefully you can get the next bite. Just looking In the 30 years that Gary Parsons and Keith Cavias have been tournament fishing the Gladstone and Escanaba area waters for Great Lake walleyes, no other casting technique has flipped the script on a truly effective tournament grade bite quite like shivering has. First and second, and it went right down to the wire. <laughs> well, gentlemen, congratulations again. This is pretty cool having you one two like that. That made for a pretty yeah, we dramatic ending. did that once before, and uh, Keith won that one too. <laughs> <laughs> the philosophy of being able to hunt and catch individual fish makes it the ultimate option for a search and destroy style technique. But while the unique action of this lure sets it apart from other types of casting lures, the real key is in the interpretation and execution of the cadence. There I got one, Gary. You got one? I got one. How's he feel? Oh, you know, when you first get them on, a lot yeah. of times they just kind of yeah, glide. you can't hardly tell. I threw it an anchor, so we'll just stop right here. Put her in back reel here. Doesn't feel real big, he's got... Yeah, until then they get to the boat and it goes <laughs> All right, there he comes. <laughs> get him here. Nice. <laughs> That'll work. He's a pretty nice fish. He is a nice one. <laughs> Quite a bit fatter than I thought he was going to oh, be. Oh, yeah. Oh, I saw him down there. To me, he looked beautiful. Boy, look look at that underneath. Look at how he whacked it out, popped out now. <laughs> it was in his way in its mouth. Yeah. <laughs> There's no doubt it hit. They're so pretty up here. They're so dark. Yeah. I mean, they're almost like a Canadian a shield lake fish. Right. And that's what happens in this clear water. People don't uh, realize, but the cleaner the water, the darker the walleye is going to be. Just yeah. Especially when they're a little deeper like this. They yeah, just that's seem a dark good fish. Look at there. One of the things that I think makes the shiver minnow really unique is that I think it's got really two different actions involved. When you sweep it up, because of its shape and weighting, it actually darts to one side or darts to another side. And many times when we're looking at walleyes, if you can get a change of direction, that actually triggers bites or gets them excited. Once it does jump up to the side though, the shiver minnow actually glides very nicely down, back down towards the bottom. And I think that nice smooth travel going down lets them uh, key in or, or target that bait very well well, and that's why you get a lot of bites. Now, when you're actually working this shiver minnow, you want to cast it out there and basically get it very close to the bottom. Then what you want to do is instead of hitting bottom every time, what you want to do is work that bait so that it's basically bouncing just above the bottom. And what that does is, first of all, it keeps the bait fairly clean, but it also keeps it right in that strike zone. So the cadence I like to use, which is a little bit different than Gary's, is that I'll pop it up and quickly drop my rod tip, pop it up, drop my rod tip, and that's making it dart back and forth, almost like a walking the dog, if you've ever heard of that with bass fishing. So it's sitting down there and doing that. But every about fifth or sixth stroke, I actually just stop and let it glide and don't hit the bottom. That way I know I'm staying down close to the bottom. Gary's is a little bit different. Yeah, what I like to do is cast it out and let it fall 
and I'm using a major sweep but immediately dropping my rod tip back so I can watch that bait swim back down towards the bottom. Now on lakes where you don't have moss and grass, you can actually let it clunk the bottom. But here, where we're fishing today, if it hits the bottom, you've got moss on it. So I kind of watch the line. I, I get a, a cadence going, drop my rod tip, let it glide and swim towards the bottom. And right about when I think it's going to hit, I sweep again. So that really depends on how deep it is. Sometimes it's a little deeper. You've got to wait a little longer. When it's shallower, you're actually moving pretty fast because it's dropping pretty quick. So those are two fantastic cadences to catch fish and they both work really well. I think mine's working better than yours, though. <laughs> I took first, he didn't. <laughs> the next bite is brought to you by Mercury, number one on the water. Amsoil, performance for serious adventure. Tracker boats, fish the finest. Bass Pro Shops, your adventure starts here. Berkeley, catch more fish. Mustad, stay sharper, longer. Lowrance, fine, navigate, dominate. Motor Guide Trolling Motors, engineered for anglers. Strike King, legacy of domination for 50 years. And Powerpole, swift, silent, secure.